Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Michael's Intellectual Corner. My name is Micah, thank you for joining me again. Um, we're just going to get right into it on this episode. We're going to go ahead and be reacting to a science video. Um, it will be actually a video a Chris 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 What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I messed that all up. He's going to actually say his own name in his video. He obviously can knows a, a lot better way of saying it than I do. Pretty much this one is on uh, the true limits of humanity. Yeah. Let's see what we can go ahead and learn and get into. Let's go. Is there a border we will never cross? Are there places we will never reach, no matter how hard we try? It turns out there are. Even with sci-fi technology, we are trapped in a limited pocket of the universe and the finite stuff within it. How much universe is there for us, and how far can we go? If you look at the night sky, you might assume it will be there forever. Stars are born and die again in a cycle that feels endless. But it's not. Take the Milky Way. Up to 200,000 light years in diameter, containing some 100 to 400 billion stars. Real quick, just a um, just a caveat of what he just said: 400 to 100 to 400 billion stars in just one R1 galaxy. Now, if we times that by all the all the uh, known galaxies that we have in our universe, that means that we would have at least one billion trillion stars and i know that sounds a little goofy but that for a reference looks like this that yeah, that's a really hard number to imagine another way to put it actually is um there's ten thousand stars for every one grain of sand on earth i reiterate there's ten thousand stars for every one grain of sand on earth that is that is ridiculous you know what i'm saying that's how many stars are out there that's our brain my brain can't even i'm saying it my brain can't even comprehend it you know what i'm saying on top of that 70 percent of that is or like red dwarfs so they're already on the tail end like they're already pretty much dead but i just think that's really crazy personally um let's kind of keep it going though. billion stars how many stars do you think are born here each year thousands millions the answer is around three. Three new stars per year. 95% of all the stars that will ever exist in the universe have already been born, and we live at the tail end of the age of star formation. We are at the beginning of the end of the universe as we know it. The formation of new stars will continue to slow down. But there's more. It turns out that the universe is rushing away from us. The Milky Way is not alone. Together with the Andromeda Galaxy and more than 50 dwarf galaxies, it forms the Local Group, a region of space about 10 million light years in diameter. Our galactic neighborhood. Real quick, too, to, you got we're clear and stuff, and you know we all understand what's going on in the video. First of all, um, for uh, those of us who don't know what a, a light year is, uh, exactly pretty much what it sounds like. It's the amount, the distance that light travels in a vacuum of space within one year. That would be about nine point four six zero seven times ten to the twelve kilometers per year, or for us Americans six about six trillion miles per year that's how fast uh light travels i think you can go around the the earth about seven times you at the equator in one second that's about of the speed of light now with that being said interestingly enough as he said the local group here um i think it's made up of about three major galaxies um i want to say the andromeda galaxy our milky way galaxy and a uh, third kind of bigger galaxy, I want to say, uh, it has like a weird um, name uh, to it, but pretty much uh, these two, or these three make up our big galaxy. Now, I think he was saying, you know, something about gravity and stuff, pretty much, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but Andromeda is actually on a collision course with us on the Milky Way galaxy. Um, I think it's traveling about 70 miles per second towards us, that's about uh, faster than speeding bullet. But luckily for us, it's not even scheduled to hit us until about four to two, four to five billion years. So right now, I think it looks like this in the night sky. 
and by that time it'll look like this uh but yeah um yeah, well, there's a little something fun that is more immersed into the video, you know what I'm saying? All right, let's keep going, though. Hundreds of galaxy groups like the local group make up the Laniakea supercluster, which itself is only one of a myriad of superclusters. In total, there are around two trillion galaxies that make up the current observable universe. Unfortunately, even if we could travel at light speed, around 94% of the galaxies we can see are already unreachable for us forever. Let this number sink in for a moment. The simple fact that there's a limit for us and that there is so much universe that a human will never be able to touch is kind of frightening. Why are all of these galaxies out of reach already? Well, it all has to do with why there are galaxies in the first place, the Big Bang. We're simplifying here, but in a nutshell, about 10 to the power of minus 36 seconds after the Big Bang, the young universe was a very small bubble of energy. It wasn't completely uniform, though. Some parts of it were a tiny, tiny bit denser than others, which had massive consequences. In a process called cosmic inflation, the observable universe expanded rapidly, from the size of a marble to trillions of kilometers in a trillionth of a second. That was so fast that all those tiny differences in density were stretched from subatomic distances into galactic distances, which is why the whole universe consists of more and less dense regions. Pockets of the universe filled with a bit more stuff than the space around them. After that short but powerful inflation ended, gravity began trying to pull everything back together. Inside the denser pockets, gravity emerged victorious, and so over time, they grew into groups of galaxies like the one we live in today. The local group is our pocket of the universe. But at larger scales, outside the denser pockets, the expansion of space never stopped. This means that our local group is surrounded by a lot of stuff, but none of those structures and galaxies are gravitationally bound to us. The more the universe expands, the larger the distance between us and the other gravitational pockets becomes. Even worse for us, the expansion of the universe is accelerating. We don't know why this happens, so we came up with the concept of dark energy. You can imagine it like an invisible effect that speeds up the expansion of the universe. We'll explain these concepts in more detail in another video, though. For now, all you need to know is that the universe is expanding faster and faster. <coughs> This expansion means that there's a cosmological horizon around us. Everything beyond it is traveling faster relative to us than the speed of light. So everything that passes the horizon is irretrievably out of reach forever, and we will never be able to interact with it again. In a sense, it's like a black hole's event horizon, but all around us. 94%... The way I think of it, event horizon, the way I see it, that's kind of crazy that space goes on for that far that in I think 40 billion mile or light years in any direction that's as far as we can see in a bowl it's just a pretty much a big bowl and like it's just that beyond that so far that light physically just has not had enough time in the universe existence to come to us on earth that is kind of scary to think about how big universe actually really is uh, all right all right let's get back to it though huh percent of the galaxies we can see today have already passed it and are lost to us forever wait if we can't interact with them how come we can still see them well the way we're able to see something is via light and although the speed of light is the fastest way to travel through the universe it needs time to get from one place to another Every second, light reaches us from trillions of galaxies that have passed the horizon because when their light was emitted, they were much closer to us. We are looking at their ancient past and see their ancient positions. So the observer... Real quick, too, just to let you guys know, too, this is actually a picture of the, uh, the Hubble Deep Field. Now, uh, in different pictures, you can see that there are different, like, little red blotches on here. Those are actually galaxies. Interesting enough, those are actually galaxies and how it looked when they first started forming at the beginning of the start of the universe. That is pretty much as as much of a historical snapshot as you can ever get. Like we're seeing what the universe looked like essentially for 
our Earth was even like built, and that was like you know what I'm saying billions of years. Like, it's just crazy to me to think like that. You know what I'm saying? But um, let's get back into it. The observable universe is much larger than the universe we can actually interact with. In a sense, the universe is pulling off a great show for us, showing us things that are out of reach forever. We have no idea what these galaxies look like today, and we will never know. But we will be able to observe them for a long time as their light hits our telescopes. Interestingly, this means that currently the observable universe still appears to be growing as more and more light released by super distant galaxies billions of years ago is arriving at our doorsteps. Still, all the pockets of the universe outside the local group will one day pass our cosmological horizon. Once they do, their light won't be able to reach us anymore and from our perspective, they will fade away into darkness. Every second of your life, 60,000 stars pass the horizon. Since you started watching this video, around 22 million stars have moved out of our reach forever. Okay, but if 94% of the observable universe is beyond the cosmic horizon and gone forever, that still leaves us with 6% that is technically in reach, which is still a ton of stuff. All the galaxy pockets that are less than 18 billion light years away. They are still moving away, but slow enough that we could physically reach them, although the chances are shrinking with every second that passes. Everything that's more than around 5 million light years away is moving away from us, but the closest galaxy groups are receding the slowest, so there is a time window to jump galaxy groups. The challenge is extreme, though, even for Type 3 civilizations. Real quick, too, for, for everybody who doesn't know what Type 3 civilization is, or the Kardashev scale is pretty much just a way for us to be able to to be able to scale a civilization on how much energy they output, which to us, which means how advanced they are. It's a civilization, so pretty much level one, which hones in the entirety um, of the energy on its home planet, like all the storms, wind power, wave power, any type of power that you can think of that gets honed in naturally uh, by planet Earth. Type 1 civilization knows how to hone in on it. We're actually not even a type 1, obviously. We're like type 0 0.6 or something like that. We're a 2 civilization is able to hone in on the entirety of its home uh, solar system. So usually you're going to see a mega structure on the host sun. That way they're able to get in the entirety of the energy output from that sun as well as all the other planets in its, in its planetary system. Level 3 is a civilization that is pretty much on God tier, able to control its entire galaxy, pretty much all of the stars in its galaxy. As you can tell, a civilization that is on this scale has been around for a while, and we they pretty much seem like gods to us at, at that point. But um, yeah, it's just something fun to uh, talk about. Let's go ahead and get back into it. Even at the speed of light, a trip to the Maffei group, the closest pocket of galaxies outside the local group, would take 11 million years. If some sort of super-motivated, super-advanced civilization takes this challenge on, its potential sphere of influence could expand to hundreds or thousands of galaxies. Although, as time passes and the universe grows, they would be separated forever. It's pretty safe to assume that humans will not make this journey, at least not with technologies that are even remotely on the horizon. For us, the local group is most likely the largest structure that we will ever be a part of. Just traveling between the stars would be an achievement of epic proportions. We would already be incredibly successful if we were to colonize our cosmic backyard, which accounts for 0.0000000001% of the observable universe. As dark energy pushes the rest of the universe away from us, the local group will become more tightly bound. All its galaxies, big and small, will merge together to form one giant elliptical galaxy with the unoriginal name, Milkdromeda, in a few billion years. This process might even smash huge gas clouds together and re-spark star formation for some time. And this new light will be very welcome because at some point the galaxies outside Milkdromeda will be so far away that they become too faint to detect. Once this happens, no information outside of the local group will reach us ever again. The universe will recede from view. 
A being born in the far future in Milkdromeda will think that the universe consists of nothing but its own galaxy. When they look far into empty space, they will only see more emptiness and darkness. They won't see cosmic background radiation, and they won't be able to learn about the Big Bang. They may have no way of knowing what we know today, the nature of the expanding universe, when it began, and how it will end. They might think the universe is static and eternal. Milk drama. It's a pretty crazy thing about, but as kind of you know, sad as that kind of seems, and, and an exploration and you know, imaginative you know, side of it, you also got to think at least that galaxy right there is going to be twice, if not like three, four times bigger than the one we have already. And the one that we have already is two hundred thousand uh, light years across. So that one's probably going to be like. 400,000, 500,000 light. It's going to be really big and it's going to be really nice. Or, you know, it's still going to be like, it seems like it's going to be crowded as hell. But, you know, obviously what we're used to seeing right now in the night sky, just it's not going to be like that. Um, like with the, the Hubble Deep Field and stuff like that. But, yeah, it's a really, really interesting uh, subject. So. There will be an island in the darkness, slowly getting darker and darker. Still, with its trillion stars, the local group is certainly a big enough playground to entertain humanity for a while. After all, we still haven't figured out how to leave our solar system, and we have dozens of billions of years at the very least to explore our galaxy. And we have the incredible luck to exist at the perfect moment in time to see not only our future, but also our most distant past just by looking into the night sky. As isolated as the local group is, it is our home. And it really is a spectacular place. Time I'm going to stop it right there, because um, the video kind of goes into more of a... Uh, pretty much it veers away from the actual subject matter. Yeah, that was actually really interesting. I, I, this is why I love, love, love astronomy. This Honestly, that was my first passion. Unfortunately, it kind of moved into my second passion, because history just took over the, the first spot. But... With that being said, I really do appreciate you guys joining me. Again, this is Micah's Intellectual Corner, and I promise you we will be back with another video, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. It just depends on my schedule, but it will be a history video. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you for rocking with me. Please don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe button. I will see you again later. Peace.